Welcome to another week's broadcast here with Jamie Cart Ministries. Thank you so much for spending time with us. And this is definitely a, a different place that we are at for this broadcast. This broadcast is uh, about two nations coming together prophetically in one day. It's about God's timing with two nations. Praise the Lord. So let's pray. Lord, we come before you on this beautiful day here on the ocean. And we thank you, God, for all that you're doing. We thank you, God, for who you are. We thank you, God, that your timing is exact. It is holy and it is wonderful. And God, we thank you for this. We thank you for this day, this day in history. And this day in history, it's like no other day that has landed together on this day. And God, we ask for your presence for the ones watching, the ones that are watching the future. We ask you, God, for your presence right now on the side of this ocean. We ask you, God, for your presence, Lord, in every situation in all of our lives. And that, God, that we see you showing up at the exact time, just like you're doing today in history. We thank you for this day. We bless you, Lord. We will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in our mouths and lord we repent for when there were times that praise wasn't on our mouth we repent lord for all grumbling and complaining and god we thank you for today we love you lord in holy spirit do your work in jesus name amen so as we are here on the side of an ocean there's a reason there's a purpose for why we are here today on this beach at this day and historically something amazing happened in 1607 at 4 a.m in the morning so it was dark it wasn't a time of um <laughs> of daytime it was a an early morning still dark a ship comes up off of the shores right here on this ocean and that ship came in with some very special people, seed for this nation. On it were some people that joined a pastor, and that pastor's name was Pastor Robert Hunt. And he and the people that were with him, the men that were with him in that ship, they had taken all of this time to come across the Atlantic that's right behind us. And the Atlantic is where we're at today. And they come upon these shores, but they had a purpose. They had a plan that was not just for them. It was for everyone else, them and everyone who would follow them. And what was the purpose? He came upon the shores on April the 26th. We are here on April the 29th. Why are these dates so important? Well, on April 26th at 4 a.m., 1607 on the April 26th, this whole crew and Pastor Robert Hunt, they come upon these shores and they come here with a plan. They come here with a purpose and their purpose, we actually have his words of that purpose when he came upon these shores. Yes, it was for him. Yes, it was for the crew, but it was for everyone else that would follow after them. And this is what Pastor Robert Hunt and those gentlemen all happened. So when they got here on the shore, before I read that, they stayed on the boat. Now, you got to get this. They're, they've been coming across the Atlantic Ocean, oh my goodness, for weeks trying to get here. And so once they get here, Pastor Robert Hunt, the leader of this mission, he said, we're going to stay on the boat, on the shores that we are upon here, right beside the Atlantic. They stayed on the boat for three days, praying and fasting to get their hearts right so that they could come off of the boat. And what happened when they come off the boat? They decided right then, we're going to make a covenant with, this, with our God on this land. And these are the words of the covenant that was made, the prayer request and petition that Pastor Robert Hunt and his crew did that day. These are his words, and praise the Lord that we have it. This is what this land was to be committed 
two, and four. We do hereby dedicate this land and ourselves to reach the people within these shores with the gospel of Jesus Christ and to raise up godly generations after us. And with these generations, take the kingdom of God to all of the earth. Praise the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? May this covenant of dedication. So they were making a covenant with God on the shores when they got off the boat on April the 29th, 1607. May this covenant of dedication remain to all generations as long as this earth remains. And may this land, along with England, be, be evangelistic to the world. May all who see this cross remember what we have done here. And may those who come here to inhabit join us in this covenant and in this most noble work that the Holy Scriptures may be fulfilled. So there was a dedication that happened, and he ordered that part of the ship would be pulled apart to make a cross. And that cross was put on the shores here at Virginia, what we know now to be Virginia Beach. <laughs> and isn't that wonderful? So this is what was happening today in 1607 we have come back in history and we are here now and so when we are looking at this you're seeing that Robert Hunt and his crew they came across an ocean to dedicate this land for the gospel of Jesus Christ and for it to go into all the world and for other generations to receive Jesus as their Lord, to fulfill the scriptures, and that they, they would fall in love with the Holy Scriptures. That was and is the covenant. That covenant is still working. That covenant is still happening. And we're seeing the gospel of Jesus Christ going further into the world, especially in these last days. People are wanting to know about this Jesus because he is the only hope that is in this world. Praise the Lord. Now, you're seeing the beautiful ocean here, but today you can see there's people on the beach, they're enjoying it. And so sometimes if we do not go back and learn of our history, we cannot understand our right now. We have to be people of our Hebraic history in the Word of God, and we have to be people of our American history. And so why is this so important? today well there's two things happening today and one of them here i'm going to put this up here so you can actually see right here we've got israel and we have america together now one of the things that i learned quite some time ago when Dwayne and i went to uh, jerusalem we, we stayed in israel for a while and uh, saw so many beautiful things and the lord taught us some things <laughs> for sure you know that jerusalem has the letters u s a right in the center of it so the usa is literally inside of jerusalem the name of jerusalem and so today is also a very special day for israel so as we see the first landing the historic happening in america today on, on April the 29th, when Robert Hunt and his crew came out on the shores here of the Atlantic at Virginia Beach. You also, today, on April the 29th, on the Gregor, excuse me, on the Hebraic calendar, it is a very special day. And on the Hebraic calendar, it is Nisan 21. And so, on the exact same day that Robert Hunt in 1607 that he and his crew get out of the boat and claim this land for Jesus Christ and for all generation. We also have in the Ameri in, on the excuse me on the Jewish calendar Nisan 21. So why is that important? Well, one of the things is that we are also in the feast of Passover right now, and so that feast of Passover is when God's God's children came out of Egypt. And they were rescued by the Lord, and they came out. Their Redeemer, Jesus Christ, rescued them, and they came out of their slavery. Now, 
why Nassan, today's date, Nassan 21 is so important, is that Nassan 21 is the day that God opened up the Red Sea and the Hebrew children walked on dry ground through the ocean. Praise the Lord. And so you have God's people on this day in the Psalm 21 on the Hebraic calendar coming right on this day, coming through the Red Sea on dry ground. An impossible, an impossible, but not with God, situation that had happened. And it was on an ocean. So with saying that it is uh, Passover, I want to just read this to you that there's some wonderful things that we see in Israel. You know, the Bible talks about Israel a lot, praise the Lord. And Father God married Israel. He's betrothed to her. And it says here in Isaiah 62, 1-3, through 3, for, I, for Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her imputed righteousness and vindication go forth as brightness, and her salvation radiates as does a burning torch. And the nation shall see your righteousness and vindication, your rightness and justice, not just your own, but his ascribed to you. And all kings shall behold your salvation and glory, and you shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. You shall also... Be so beautiful and prosperous as to the thought of a, as a crown of glory and honor in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem exceedingly beautiful in the hand of your God. So for Zion's sake, we will not hold our peace. For Jerusalem's sake, we will not rest. And so what do we need to be doing? We need to be praying for the peace of Jerusalem. You know, Jesus was, we were grafted into them. Ephesians 2 talks about that because of what Jesus did, he created one new man, ending the ending all strife between Jew and Gentile. We've become one. We are the church, the born again through Jesus Christ, the Messiah. He's there, he's their Messiah too. They just have to see it and realize it. And so in this time, praise the Lord, we are in a prophetic day, and this day is a good day. It's a day that it's a marker for all of history when God's people come through the Red Sea to get to their salvation, to get to their promised land. And I really want you to hear that right there, that God's people, when it was time for them to be rescued, it was at Passover, and they left Egypt, praise the Lord. And the Bible says they left Egypt rich, they left Egypt with gold and silver and none of them were sick none of them were feeble none of them were weak praise god and so this is that time that it happened that they left during this feast of passover and so it got to that day of nasan 21 in their time and that time of nasan 21 was their day when god rescued them triumphantly and they crossed through an ocean a sea to get to their promised land robert hunt and his crew they come across a red sea glory to god to get to their promised land and why is this so significant it's because in this year 2024 both rescues both dates both historical first both uh groups of people of Israel, of Israel and the United States of America coming together at one day in one time in the prophetic historical of God when one group of people crossed over an ocean to get to their promised land and one group of people left slavery <laughs> and come through an ocean to get to their promised land. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Isn't that amazing? And see, because of the Jewish calendar, you know, it, it changes every year. So for this to land at the exact day 
the exact day that Robert Hunt came to the United States of America, Pastor Robert Hunt, and he came and he made a covenant with God over this land. Praise the Lord forevermore. Now, what happened to Robert Hunt? What happened to all that? You know, we've got chronicled what happened to God's, uh, the Hebra or the, excuse me, the Hebrew children, what happened to them <laughs> in, in the Word of God. But what happened to Robert Hunt? Well, Robert Hunt, he eventually, he and his crew, they go up the James River and they go to a place that we all know called Jamestown. And Jamestown is where they built the first church. They started out under the trees right there on the water, and they built the first church. And at that first church, they had legislative assembly. So the government, the, um, the first decisions and discussions of what would legally take place on this land, it happened right up this water, just a little bit, and that's where the first church was. And that was where the first governmental meetings happened in that church. Praise the Lord. And so, you know, God, and what they would do before they would even meet and start having their governmental meetings, they would pray, they would fast, they'd get the word of God out. And that's how they made decisions. Hallelujah. And that's exactly what needs to be happening in the United States of America. You know, when Robert Hunt took part of that ship and ordered that a cross be made, um, and they put it in the sand right here on these shores. It was to decree, decree and declare that this land is God's. This is how we started. And it was with God. It was with his word. And we also honoring the word of God. When you're honoring the word of God, you're also honoring Israel. Because this is the people from the Holy Spirit that the word of God came through. Praise the Lord. And so... These two nations, one nation, God chose, and you know, right here, when I'm, I'm going to try to grab this right here. So this nation began with God making a covenant with them, seeking them out. The United States of America, we made a covenant seeking out God. We made a covenant because we wanted to be with Him. And so both lands are very special to the Lord, and both lands are covered and threaded with covenant, commitment, compact with Almighty God. And, you know, there's a lot of things that we're seeing in our country, and especially this right here with Israel and America. There are more for Israel than they are against her. Praise the Lord. And so you've got people that are coming out and, 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 and being against Israel. When you're against Israel, you're against God. This is His bride. Jesus married the church. Praise the Lord. Now, He is their Messiah also. And they will one day see that. That, that, will, that, will be, that veil will be lifted off their eyes that they some have. They're all Messianic Jews that have received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. But when you're coming against Israel, you are literally coming against the Word of God and God Himself. And it is a dangerous place to be. And I pray for the people that are against Israel, that they would wake up, they'd have dreams and visions and insight, and that they would give their lives to Jesus, the Messiah, who is Jewish. Praise the Lord. He is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He is Jewish. So when you're coming against Israel, you're coming against Jesus. You're coming against, he is the word of God. And this shall not be. This should not be. So I want to read some more to you here. The scripture, it says here that Isaiah 66, 8, 10. Who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall a land be born in one day? Or shall a nation be brought forth in a moment? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she brought forth her children. And so she birthed forth her children. So it says rejoice. Verse 10, rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for all you who love her. Rejoice for joy with her, all you who mourn over her. So this right here, we need to really see is that Israel was not a nation from, 19, from 70 A.D. to 1948. 
she was not a nation. She was born, if you will, born again in 1948. And she was born in one day. The prophecy of Israel coming to pass. That's when the time clock of Matthew 24 started ticking. Everything of the, the storms, the pestilence, the earthquakes, the fear, all those things that are in Matthew 24, they're all there. Yet, it said that when you watch the fig tree, you'll know the time that you're in. The fig tree is Israel. And when and the Israel, the fig tree, became a nation again, that's when the time clock began for the rapture of the church. Praise God. So, you need to be on the right side. You need to be on the side of Israel. You need to be for Israel and for America because there are covenants in place that God is watching over. Praise the Lord. And it says here, um, also, where we are in the Feast of Passover, and it says, Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied are the people who know the joyful sound, who understand and appreciate the spiritual blessing symbolized by the feast. They walk, O Lord, in the light and favor of your countenance, and in your name they rejoice all the day, and in your righteousness they are exalted. For you are their glory of their strength their proud adornment and by your favor our horn is exalted and we walk with uplifted faces for our shield belongs to the lord hallelujah and our king to the holy one of israel so knowing about the feast understanding the feast being in a place where you know them yet you celebrate them and see jesus took all the hard parts out of the feast praise the lord and what's left is the goodness, the joy, the history, the blessing. Praise the Lord. And so we invite you to even get on our webpage and learn more about your history in the feast. We're in Passover right now. And so we want to uh, celebrate this time and celebrate by looking at the history. In the Psalm 21, this is when freedom happened. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and God's people were, they escaped from their enemies praise the lord and also in the united states of america when robert hunt and his whole crew came here purposely to dedicate this land for jesus christ the gospel of jesus christ the winning of people receiving the jesus as our lord and savior this is the same day so this day two nations have come together this day April 29th, 2024, on the Psalm 21, April the 29th, 2024, these two nations have come together for freedom, for breakthrough, to be free from their enemies, to, and in the United States, for this entire land to win people to Jesus Christ for generations and generations and generations to come. So as you're watching this and you're seeing how prophetically God can put things together, we want to remind you in that God will move everything for you in your life to be good to you, to do good things for you. But it's up to you also. It's up to me also. We have to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and we have to follow the things that he's telling us to do. Be what he tells you to be. Do what he tells you to do. Um, surrender. It's called surrendering. And so if you have never given your life to Jesus Christ or you're away from him, this is the time and your opportunity on this very special day to do so. So the Bible says that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that you shall be saved. So this is what, this is the procedure. So if you're ready to do so, and I believe that you are, then just do this prayer, mean it with all your heart, say it out of your mouth and say, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you, and I am giving you my life today. Jesus, please forgive me of all I've been doing wrong and the sin in my life. I turn from that. And Jesus, I ask you to come into my life and save me. I ask you to do something great with my life. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and fire. I make you, Jesus, the Lord of my life. I stand with you. I stand with the United States of America. And I stand with Israel. I give you my all. I'm following you, Lord, from here on out. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Now, before we leave, I just want to say this, is that in this time of Passover that we're in, there's an opportunity for you to do something in the feast. And that opportunity is found in um, Isaiah 66, 8 through 10. And it says, Three times a year all your men must appear before the Lord, your God, at the place he will choose, at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, which is Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. No one should appear before the Lord empty-handed. Each of you must bring a gift in proportion to the way the Lord your God has blessed you. So what is something you can do in celebration of this historical and prophetic time of Nisan 21, this, this exact date of April 29th, and inside of this Feast of Passover? You can bring God a gift. Bring him a gift. Bring him an offering and bless him with it and, and praise him with it. Worship him and then bring it to him. And if the Lord would have you to do that through this ministry, we would appreciate that. And we thank you for so much for it. And we'll bring it to the Lord uh, on your behalf as we'll be bringing ours also. And just to let you know, the Lord loves you today. You're special to him. It's not a coincidence that you're watching this. He wants you to know he loves you so much. He made it all line up just like this day was lined up in two nations of Nisan 21 on the shores here of the Atlantic of uh, when Robert Hunt come, <laughs> praise the Lord, he and his crew to dedicate this land to the Lord Jesus Christ. He set this up just in that same manner. He made sure that you were watching today, watching online. He wanted you to know and to stop everything so that you could hear this. You are very special to him. You're a jewel to him. And I think somebody, when I said that word jewel, treasury, that meant a lot to you. And he wants you to know that you are so special. And he is excited to start this new life with you and to be um, your best friend. Thank you for joining us today. The Lord loves you. We love you. If you need anything, if you... Uh, need a Bible? If you said that prayer, let us know. We want to send you some free resources. If you do need a Bible, we want to send you that also. Again, this is Pastor Jamie on the shores here of Virginia Beach where Pastor Robert Hunt dedicated this entire United States of America to the Lord. And also on the exact same day that Israel on the Psalm 21 went through the Red Sea to get to their promised land on April 29th, 2024, the same day Robert Hunt came upon these shores, put a cross in the beach, and dedicated it to the Lord. We love you. We bless you. You keep getting ready because you can see it. Jesus is coming. <laughs>